Alright, so this is uh, day four of eight day. You try to get everything done in Distant Spring on, the, on one day. Um, it's actually the easiest place to do it all in one day because you don't have to grow any Pikmin. Uh, but it can be hard for newer runners. So uh, if you don't get everything in one day, it's, it's fine. You can just come back the next day and clean up. It doesn't matter too much for the remaining days. Uh, but first we're going to get out 90 Pikmin and throw 20 of them up on this ledge. One more, go, and make sure our blues are on the right side here so they don't fall off. Alright, so now we're going to dismiss, we're going to grab these blues, and the way to get these blues onto this part is just stand in the corner, hold C-stick up, and then when they get around the corner, you can just press X, there you go. Alright, now, the camera is the most important in Distant Spring out of any of the areas, in my opinion. Uh, there are a lot of times where you want things to be deloaded, so you just keep it zoomed in as much as possible. So here I'm keeping it zoomed in just so that piece when it falls off. Um, if it's on camera, the blues fall off of it sometimes, so I just want to keep it off camera. Alright, and just kill those guys. And I want 35 reds going into the next fight. Uh, so I just kind of walk up and just have the my crowd of blues touch that bridge, because if they touch it, they'll automatically go on it. And when I'm getting close to 35, then that's when I switch to just throwing some on. There we go. And so now this next camera trick I'm going to do here. So we're going to kill a blowhawk here for the uh, interstellar radio, I think it's called. And th the spawn position and facing position of this blowhawk is ideal for what we want. So we're just going to try to keep it off camera as long as possible. You can glance up to it briefly, um, just so you know you're not going the wrong direction. Um, but I like to keep it off, basically until I'm there. So he can turn towards us. And now if you see, there's a bit of a line. Like imagine a line between that plant on the top side of the screen that's in the water, and the water dump is to our right. As long as the blowhog is on our side of that line, when he drops the piece, the Pikmin will take it in the correct direction. Um, if they take it the other way, then I think sometimes they get eaten by water dumples. So just try to avoid that. Try to keep them on this side of the line. Um, but you also don't want to go too far, because if you go too far, then you, you get slightly out of his aggro range, and it's hard for him to get the correct angles that he can aggro on you. Uh, so just go a little bit, uh, and then just you know make sure he's on the side of the line, but not too far. So now the way we fight him is a little finicky. Uh, so what we want to do is want to stand in front of him until he sucks in air as if he's about to blow. And then as soon as we see that, we're going to run either under him or just kind of to the side and see stick throw Pikmin on him. Uh, he's going to fall to the ground, and when he gets to about half health, we're going to whistle them off. Uh, the reason for that is he, he tries to shake them off um, if we wait too long, and that deflowers them. So we want to you know, whistle them off so they don't get deflowered, and then as soon as we whistle them, just throw them back on him. And the reason, so one thing about when we throw them back on him though, uh, you don't want to touch the C-stick when you're throwing them back on him until you see the Pikmin are not inside of him, any, inside of him anymore. Because uh, if they're inside of him and you try to C-stick throw, they're just going to try to grab onto him and they're not going to be able to, and you won't get enough on him. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, this is what it should look like. We gotta watch cutscene though, of course. I always forget about this cutscene. Alright, it's about half, whistle off, start throwing again. And if we're quick enough, we'll actually die before he hits the ground. Yeah, there we go. And throw 10 of our Pikmin over here. We only want 25 on this piece. And I find if I C-stick them onto the piece, as opposed to uh, just dismissing them next to it, that makes them usually grab it uh, more consistently. If you just dismiss them, a lot of the time, sometimes they, they don't they don't grab it. So just C-stick them on there. And now we want to move these Wally Wogs. I want this guy to go to the left, this guy to go to the right. And keep in mind my camera position here. This will just keep them deloaded as long as possible. Um, if you hear, it kind of sounded like their falling animation, like the, the sound. Instead of hitting the ground, it's just kind of like, like it never, it sounds like it never ended. 
Uh, that's because it actually did never end. They haven't hit the ground yet. And next time they load in, they'll hit the ground. So, I'll just grab my 20 blues here. And we want to start building this bridge near the Gluant Drive. And this we're not going to come back to until, like, uh, near the end of the day. Uh, this is the last piece we get. But put 8 on there because that one is, is pretty quick to build. And then we're going to put 22 on the other one after we bring this Wally Wog over here. Uh, first, we have to kill three Sheer Gums. Alright, put everyone on this bridge here. Uh, if people start trying to grab the Shearwigs, just keep whistling them off and see sticking them towards the bridge, and eventually they'll, they'll stop grabbing the Shearwig. Uh, now we want to keep our camera zoomed in so we don't re-aggro that Wallywog from before. And then make this one jump over here so he's not in our way later. Again, camera zoomed in. Walk by him. If he jumps, that's okay. If he doesn't, it's also fine. Uh, we just want to keep going back to the base now. Also, if you lose a couple blues when you're fighting the Shearwigs there, that's actually okay because we'll have a few extras later that we can bring around. Alright, so now we're going to grab these 10 blues and we're going to grab, or 25 blues, and grab 10 yellows. And notice I'm particularly keeping this camera zoomed in here. I don't want to look at that Wallywog that's uh, above me here. So I just want to keep staying on the left side here. Just keep him deloaded as long as possible. All right, we have 67. There's two, three here, I should say. And again, to get by here, just C-stick, kind of swirl on the back side of the C-stick, and then dismiss here. Um, that actually didn't work. Actually, let me show you what I usually do here. That didn't work as well as I thought it would. Um, if they're behind me and I C-stick up and then back on the control stick and then press X, that'll dismiss them so the blues are near the part and the yellows aren't. Just walk towards it, C-stick up, down the control stick, X. And that should, that should put them on that part. So now you want to throw one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you, you do definitely want to throw the Pikmin there, not just, you know, C-stick them around the bombs. Because it, while it can still happen when you throw them, um, it's less rare. Uh, what can happen if you just C-stick them? Sometimes they, like, they, there's, no, there's no bomb there, like they don't pick it up for some reason. Um, but I find it more consistent if you just throw them. So, anything I can to prevent them from missing bombs. Because uh, if they do it twice, then there's just there's not enough bombs, and you, you, you have to reset the day. Alright, so moving on. Again, I am just staying zoomed in as much as possible here. Staying on the right side now, so that while I walk to my left, it's not load back in. And now that I'm on my way back, I'm going to destroy this gate. Probably going to two-cycle it. I only need nine bombs. But I'll just throw all of them. And if we're lucky, we can get a cutscene skip here, but I, I, I wasn't fast enough, I should say. Not, not lucky. Um, and now that we have everyone, we're gonna go over into this area. So, there are two directions you can take here. If you go around the right direction, uh, there's less, there, there's more room, I should say, so it's less likely you accidentally wake up a bull there. But if you go on the left side, then there's, there's no, um, there's no nectar patch you have to deal with. Um, there's a nectar patch that's kind of in your way on the right. So I just like to go on the left. Um, just kind of move, you know, move my guys against this wall, which gets them in a line, and then just C-sticking around on the back side of the C-stick to get them moving over here. And now we have to kill these three Shearwigs. All right, grab our blues. Um, we don't want anyone to carry anything, so I'll just dismiss over here. And we want to put all but 25 of our blues on this bridge here. And the way I like to do this, um, if you're too close to the wall, um, when you throw a Pikmin, they'll actually bounce off the wall, so just stay slightly away from the wall when you throw them there. Alright, 
And now I'm keeping my camera zoomed in here because there is a blow hog to my right that I don't want to aggro. So just keeping it zoomed in as I walk to get these bombs. Uh, swirl my Pikmin in the bombs, bring them out, and I should only get blues. And then just stay on this side of the skull, and I can throw all of my blues over here onto the little donut thing, the pilot seat. So I should have... Let's see... I only have nine bombs, that's fine, because I only need eight, actually. Um, so two bombs go towards this wall. And then there's a grass patch here that I like to swirl my Pikmin in before I throw the bombs. And then this takes four bombs. And make sure you don't go too far to the right here with Olimar, or else you will spawn some shivweeds. So once that's done, um, you need to long throw these bombs, and long throw them on the left side of the wall, not the right side, because there's a Wallywog on the right side. Uh, you can just you know walk around there and distract the Wallywog if you would like, but I recommend just trying to get good at this throw and throwing them on the left side. All right, and whistle them back. And also I recommend trying to throw both at the same time, because if you throw one, wait for it to explode, and then throw another, uh, the wall is lower, and sometimes you can throw the yellow over the wall, which can be kind of annoying. So um, just I, I would suggest throwing them both at the same time. All right, and just dismiss our yellow here. Now it's time to kill the armored can beetle. It's literally the exact same as in Force of Hope, but we only have blues this time, so it's a little harder. Uh, but just stay up next to it, see sick throw them onto it, and you should be okay. And as soon as it dies, I'm gonna press X to dismiss. That'll make all, except for maybe one of the Pikmin go on the part. And then I'll grab that, that one Pikmin that sometimes doesn't go on it is the one that's in its snout. Uh, so I'll grab that Pikmin, just dismiss it there, it'll grab the part, and then grab my yellow seer. Uh, one thing to mention, if when you were building the bridge near the Gluon Drive and you were killing the uh, shoe rubs, if some of your Pikmin died there, this is where you have extras, and so say two of my Pikmin died when I was killing the sheer, bug, sheer grubs, I'm gonna grab two of my blues off of this and bring them over to that bridge right now. Uh, but since I don't need any extras, I'm only gonna grab my yellows. And just put them to work right there. And grab all of my blues. I should have, you need 30 blues here exactly, or at least I should say. Um, so just bring your blues over here, camera zoomed in there so that while I walk to my right doesn't see me, and then just dismiss them there. And now we're going to walk back to the ship. Uh, you can just dismiss them and leave, you don't have to wait for all 30 to get on, they'll always get on there, so just a little time saver. Alright, I don't like that guy to go too far, like I wouldn't want him to jump over here because that's out of his range so he'll walk back to his spawn point if I make him go too far, so sometimes I'll wait just so that he doesn't jump too far. Uh, and also it doesn't matter if I waste a little time there, uh, because usually you're not back here until the, you're usually back here before the uh, bowsprit uh, has gone through the gates, so it's okay to waste a little time because you need to wait till it's uh, you know about, about here before you can whistle them off of it. If you whistle it uh, a little earlier, then it sometimes gets stuck in that corner there. So again, just moving past these guys. One thing to mention actually, these guys are sleeping on a slope, and as I mentioned way back in my impact side tutorial, everything in this game slides when it's on a slope very slowly, and since it's been at least half a day here, they've actually slid since the last time I've been here, so it's a little easier to do this um, on this round. So if you're, if you're feeling nervous about doing it earlier, um, you can skip it earlier and just try it there. It's a little bit easier uh, on the second time around. So I want to put at least 20 up there, so I just want to see I have you know 30-something in my party. And then swarm my yellows up here. And now this is, I'm going to put this in this corner so they don't get bothered by the blowhog. This is basically the only glitch that we use in this run. Um, so I need to get up on this ledge to my right, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use this bull bear to clip me. 
So there's this little dark texture here. That's where I want to stand and just face kind of up and to the right a little bit. Uh, and he will, he will, uh, when he tries to bite me, he'll clip me up. So just wait for him to bite. The first time it doesn't usually work, but the second time if you're just lined up with him, um, then it does usually work. Ah, that was a little too low there. Uh, this is, usually works, there we go. That one can be finicky. It's hard to be really consistent at it, but just try to be walking uh, parallel to the way that the bull bear is facing and just be holding up into the wall. So as soon as he clips you up, um, grab these glues here and we're gonna walk to the, ooh, I don't know, actually, the Kronos reactor, I think it's called. Um, this saves having to do this long puzzle where you swap your blues for yellows and yellows for blues again. So there's an invisible wall on our right, so we're gonna have to go around the corner there and then around this one as well. And just throw all from up here. This piece only takes 20, but I like to have slightly more than 20 blues up there just in case it will fall off around that corner. And watch for guys sometimes don't grab it here. One other thing to notice is I didn't, I, I deliberately dismissed the Pikmin um, a little far away from the piece there so I didn't get near the piece. Because if you get near that piece, you'll activate a text box which loses you know a second or two. So just try to dismiss them away from the piece. And then when you see you have 20, uh, you can move on to this next piece, which is Ionium Jet 1, I believe it's called. So just throw all of your blues up here. And then, so we want to throw the blues across the ledge here. There's a bit of a unique uh, feature of this ledge is, so normally you would think, oh, I want a C-stick throw over here just so I can throw as fast as I can. Um, they actually don't make it over the ledge sometimes when you see stick throw, but if you just hold up into the ledge and mash A, you throw as fast as if you're C-stick throwing. So, like, I'm not touching the C-stick at all right now, and they're just throwing fairly fast. Alright, and we're going to need to distract these water dumples. We're going to pull them over here, and then zoom in right about there, so they'll stay off camera. They're deloaded, they won't bother our Ionium Jet Pikmin. And keep the camera zoomed in here so that you don't reload in that bull bear that was wake that was awoken earlier. Uh, we want him to stay off camera as long as possible so he stays over here and doesn't bother our Pikmin. There we go, and he's deloaded again, that's what we want. Alright, so now just C stick swirl around here. And I'm just holding up left into the wall there so nobody falls off. Uh, up left on the C stick, I should say. And actually the control stick. But and then just throw all 20, or sorry, all 10 up that ledge. So now we're gonna grab the last piece, which is the gluon drive. It takes 50 Pikmin, um, but 70 can be on it. I like to throw three or four away here because it's really unlikely for all 70 to grab onto it. Um, so usually a couple will not grab it if you have 70, so I just throw four here so they don't get left behind. And just walk around here. Uh, I'm gonna distract this Wallywog one more time. So that it does not bother the Pikmin as they pass by. And if you're if you have the Pikmin on this part as the end of day, like, oh time's running out, you know, where there's one tick left on the clock. If you have them on the piece right when that text comes up, that's exactly how much time you need to get it. So that's, I have one extra tick here, basically. All right, so a little trick here. Both of these bull bears are actually in the path of the gluon drive. So we're gonna try to wake both of them and then deload them outside the path of the gluon drive. And the way we're gonna do that is just touch both of them to wake them up. And then I'm gonna walk in this corner and when I see them both um, try to bite me, that's when I'm gonna zoom in the camera and walk away as fast as I can. All right, there we go. And they should be deloaded now. So just keep them off screen and you should be okay. Um, here is the, whatever it's called, the bowsprit. We have 30 Pikmin here, so we can just carry that back to base. Uh, if you want, you can wait. You can like you know stop it just before 
it gets in. Uh, and this is just so you can get a cuts and skip on it using the, uh, the glue on drive. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> but you can try for that. And then the glue on drive comes in, and as soon as that's in, just pause, end the day. It's fine to leave some glues behind. Uh, you only need like 85 for the rest of the run. You don't even need 85, you need like, you can complete it with like you know, 50 probably if you wanted to. But just end the day, and that's all you need to do. So that's definitely a hard one. Um, if you don't get everything done in one day, like I said, it's okay. Just come back the next day and uh, pick up what you uh, left behind. There will be snitch bugs and one extra, uh, one extra blow hog near the bull bears that I just distracted on the next day. But if you're if you're early enough, they shouldn't bother you too much. Um, so yep, yeah, that's about it. Um, good luck. Uh, I see one Pikmin got left behind here. That's fine. Uh, I'd say the hardest thing in the day is, you know, one cycling the cannon beetle can be kind of hard, and just remembering you know, where the camera has to be uh, to deload everything that can be a little difficult. Uh, but that's just muscle memory, so it'll come in time. And all right, moving on to day five. Uh, days five and six and seven are actually just clean up really, so they're pretty easy. This once you're done with this, this is the hard part of the run. So uh, yep, good luck with the next couple parts.